Actually, the fact that there's a consistency of snow, you do not see any of these means of opening the key behind the porch polis, extend two passages, one to the northeast, one to the southeast, both are blocked by curtains, so you cannot see what may lie beyond. Treasure chamber. Pushing aside the curtain to the northeast, you see a corridor that extends less than 100 feet and stops abruptly, and widens as a progressive screen, stopping the chamber at the furthest end within the chamber are a number of crates, chests, other pinches, and other receptacles. Chieftain's quarters. Even as you push aside the curtain, blocking access to the chamber, a few sound comes in your direction, a blur, shaggy fur, and spinning blades, slams into the heart, or just eat. You feel the creature. <coughs> this side cavern has been made of a fairly extravagant under the circumstances anyway. Living chamber, an actual wooden bed frame, supports layers of thick furs and a number of all but thick wool cloaks have been sewn together to form a right broken weapons, bits of armor, helms lined the walls and their various and right sizes and styles and suggest they come from a wide range of races. A fire pit sits in the center of the room, dungeons are compact dress surrounding by sounds where a small but cheerful fire crackles away within it. The curtain had prevented you from seeing into this chamber from the gate is thick good, but for privacy and for keeping the warmth of the fire from leaching out of the chamber. Well, there's a uh, high level bug barrier. You fight and kill it, or slay it at right speed. Excavation. The great chamber is clearly, clearly a natural cavern. The floor is uneven and a little littered with columns and slagmites. The walls are rough, jagged, and riddled with crevices. The sound of hard labor, hammer blows, and cracking rock echo from the far end of the cavern. From where you stand, you cannot see who or what might be the source of those sounds. This portion of the cave does not seem as natural as rain was rest. Clearly, some of the interior takes some of the cave rest, forming a small passage or an empty chamber that nature did not intend. Two bug bears, all six. You kill both of them easily with no challenge. Entryway. This cavern starts wide enough, and even where it is narrow to the east, the corridor remains sufficiently broad to encompass creatures far larger than you. The ice and rock in the cup of fire broken down, even should not cause you a great deal of trouble if you pick your way across it carefully, but you would not want to take it out of its cancer. Here and there, enormous limbs and broken bits of equipment jet through ice, clearly not all the protrusions and nines on the floor are natural. <coughs> Frostworm Cavern. The wide passage opens in, into an enormous cavern of smooth ice, as the floor numerous passages and sub caverns continue in all directions, but you have little time to examine them in the center of the room. An enormous worm like creature with gaping mandibles lunges as you are and sliding across ice of frightening speed. Frostworm Attack. You kill the Frostworm. Mess and clutch. The large side of this cavern has a ring of broken ice and rock against the northern wall. The floor shows signs of warping as not smooth as it is to the south. Within the circle shards are a number of strange objects that appear to be ice formations, but their perfect oval shapes suggest they may not be natural. Merle. From a distance, the walls in this almost rectangular alcove look just like all those in the surrounding area, rock covered by layers of ice upon close inspection. However, it becomes clear that these walls are not normal. Though it is patched in many places, solely with age hidden behind thick sheets of ice, you see that a strange moral adorns all three of these walls. Specific details are difficult to distinguish, but you are fairly certain you make out human shapes and various poses and postures. They appear to be prostrating themselves before icons that look like snow capped mountains. Among the mountains are shapes much larger than the human race depicted. These shapes represent white dragons, blue bearded and white skinned giants, and other such creatures. Abandoned a temple. After squeezing through a bottleneck in the corridor, you find yourself in a moderately sized chamber of haphazard and jagged shape. Although they are mostly hidden beneath ice and dirt, you make, can make out portions of various abstract symbols carved from the floor. They too are jagged, almost sharp, somehow disconcerting to look at for more than a few moments at a time. Near the south end of the chamber stands a rectangular block of stone, perhaps five feet long by two feet wide by four feet high. These stones is obviously not native to the caverns. The block is clearly made of a polished white marble, which you had never come across in the region. Directly behind the marble stands an iron disc the size of a carriage wheel, upon which are carved more abstract symbols, intertwined with draconic forms, heavily burdened human faces, and mountain peaks. Mythic layer. This cavern is narrow but high, the ceiling appears to be at least 20 feet from the floor, numerous ledges and holes bed at the walls, and several columns of ice and rock rise from the floor to various heights. Method retreat. The corridor leading behind the ceiling cavern is extremely narrow, less than two feet wide. Further, you can see the twists and turns as it goes, and the walls are rough. Compared to the other caverns you have seen in the region, this particular cave is tiny, less than 15 feet on each side. The ceiling is only about 7 feet from the floor, making the chamber feel even more cramped. I think corridor is as narrow as stretches as one that led you here leads off to the southwest. Lair of the Great Wizard. Great Lizard. As you round a bend in the cavern wall, an earth-shaking roar rattles your ear drums, and the earth literally does shake as an enormous reptilian horror eyes glow with feet and skin black as midnight charges towards you on two powerful ledges running beside it as a bearded white-skinned giant wearing furs and carrying a pair of axes. The gap is in the stone beside you, and it's almost too wide to be properly called a cavern, and it's really little more than an exceptionally large bend in the wall, so it's clear that something has been using the area as a layer of furs and stones are piled into an enormous circular nest, and a pile of the furs laid out beside it. it looks almost like a primitive bed for a giant. The entire place smells of reptilian musk, you can only imagine how much worse it would be in a warm climate. There's a mega rapper here that you fight and kill. Refuge. Wolf Den. Trainer. This broad cavern has a number of niches along the wall, holes in the crevices in the snow, and remains a large fire pit and camp on the left near the wall from within the crevices, eyes gleaming glare at you. Abandoned camp. Gone fishing. The lake shore. Fishing again. Fishing camp. Young adult worn. Rock Kemp's Hall. Prostatic barracks. Guest lair. Storage cage. Abandoned outpost. The dead. Entry cave. Ice corridor. Double traps. Purple worm lair. Bone devil lair. Slave cave. Crevice. Huge cave. Corpse storage pool room, Tegra's chambers, Cairo hydro layer, sentry camp, pit, slave pens, refuge pit, rest cave, black cutting cave, central mines, deep mines, remorse has layer, shrines of aspect of winter, sideways and chamber, the exit, the semi area, Barcellus's legacy, Dardarius throne room. Well, we end up coming across Fandor Tulo and uh, Amarantiel and Barcellus and Brazos, and you slay all of them and complete the world's largest dungeon. And you pass level 20 like level 24 now. Congratulations.